All right, everybody. Uh, this is a quick video. I have Brett on the on the Discord, and he's recording his screen so we can see both sides. And I'm going to show you how to use the uh, NAT hole punching on a server. The most important thing is that you need three different devices on three different networks. So you have your say you're running a server inside of Unity like I am, and a client inside of Unity like Brett is, and he's over the internet. He's at his house. I'm at my house. So we're on two different networks, and you have one more. Uh, server in the cloud somewhere else that has its ports forwarded for the net hole punch uh, server that you're going to run. So here's a Linux uh, shell here. I'm going to show you I have the net hole punch exe here so I'm just going to do mono net hole punch and run that. You'll see it says it's hosting on this port. Now that I have it hosting... Sure the firewall is open to ports too? Yeah, on the on the server, on the NAT server, the firewall needs to be open for this port on UDP. Uh, you can open up TCP and UDP, but uh, make sure this port is open for your NAT server. You obviously do not need to have your ports open on the client or the game host, because that's why we're using NAT hole punch. So uh, on the canvas, uh, I'm going to scroll down here, and you're going to see NAT uh, server host, and it's going to have an IP address right there. You can't see mine because I'm blocking it out. I don't care. Well, actually, whatever. Um, and you're going to see that the port for the NAT server is the same port that you saw it log inside of the console. And this is the same exact thing for the client. Brett will show you. He'll go to the canvas and then he'll scroll down and you'll see that uh, the server for the NAT and the, uh, the port in the host is going to be the same. So they're going to match. We have those both on the client and the server. Now uh, all we're going to do is we're just going to uh, fire up that uh, that NAT uh, hole punching server on our cloud server. I'm using Ubuntu. Um, in that case, you need to use Mono to run it. If you're on a Windows cloud server, you don't need to run Mono. You just need to run the executable. Uh, it'll look basically the same. And now, when I go to host my server, so I'm going to hit play. I'm going to I'm going to hit host down here, and I'm going to start hosting. I can go over here and create a couple of these little blocks here. Block, block, block. And what you'll notice is if you go back to the shell, you'll see that the host server received uh, my IP address here, uh, which is blocked out, and the port number, which is being hosted on, which is 15937, the default port. So now on the client side, you'll see Brett, he'll play, um, he'll jump over into the IP address field, type in the IP address. Um, it's a bunch of asterisks, obviously, because it's my IP address. Uh, and then he's going to connect. Now when he connects, you're going to see that it spawns him in and he can uh, see what I'm doing and I can see what he's doing. It's normal forge flow. Blocks! <laughs> Tons of blocks. Blocks! <laughs> um, I do want to point out one of the most, uh, if you're opening up a brand new scene, something that trips people up the most is they don't turn on run in background. Go into your, your Unity settings and turn on run in background, otherwise it's not going to work because the process has to be running in the background because it's multi-threaded. Um, so that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, just send them into the Discord, and uh, everybody will help out and answer in, and, uh, and hopefully this answers some questions. And if there's anything that we didn't cover, we'll just write up a little bit of extra documentation on the page that this video will be on. Um, so thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. We'll see you guys in the community. Later.